Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a movie titled Last Action Hero. Be aware, there are spoilers. The movie begins with a large number of police officers tending to a hostage situation in Los Angeles. Plainclothes officer Jack Slater arrives in his open-topped car and strides purposefully towards the building, ignoring the instructions of Lieutenant Decker and the mayor, who plead with him to stop. Pushing various cops aside with force, Slater makes his entrance. Now on the top of the building, there are many children huddling together in fear, while the protagonist, the Ripper, holds an axe to the neck of Slater's son, Andy. Slater is told to throw down all the weapons he is carrying. He follows the command for the kid's safety. However, he has kept a grenade to hand, which he throws onto the ground at the feet of the Ripper and his son. As the Ripper laughs at this, Andy picks it up, presses a button to reveal a hidden blade, and stabs his assailant with it. In the ensuing melee, Slater is able to shoot the aggressor. Before we can make out what has happened, we arrive in a cinema in New York in which Danny Madigan is watching this clearly out-of-focus movie. Danny gives up on the film and heads out of his cinema to complain, eventually to the owner and projectionist, his friend Nick. In the conversation that follows, Nick invites Danny, who should have been at school, to come back at midnight for a preview of Jack Slater 4. When Danny gets home, his worried and recently widowed mother, Irene, is waiting for him. Despite her annoyance at him skipping school, she gives him a big hug and tells him to lock the door while she goes out. Later at night, a burglar is able to get in though, but is frustrated to find the family have little worth stealing. During the break-in, he handcuffs Danny in the bathroom. As the burglar makes his exit, he throws the keys for the cuffs into the toilet bowl, instructing Danny to go fishing. Having reported the incident to the police, Danny is aware the movie preview is scheduled to begin soon. In a hurry, he makes his way back to the theater where Nick lets him in but insists he needs a ticket for the film. As a kind gesture, Nick hands Danny a golden ticket once given to him by his hero, the magician Harry Houdini, who reveals to have himself received it from a mystical man in India. Nick tears the ticket, reminds Danny to keep the stub and the young movie fan enters the theater, armed with a bucket of popcorn ready to enjoy the film. In the opening sequences of the movie, an Italian mob boss and his British henchman Benedict are interrogating Frank. Jack Slater's second cousin, by the pool of a stunning villa overlooking the ocean. The scene cuts to a smaller house, which two police officers are attempting to enter in an apparent drug bust. Before they can do so, Slater arrives and gains entry himself to find his second cousin gagged and bound in the hole. With his last words, Frank informs Slater that the two big mafia families plan to join forces. He spots a note addressed to him amid the ropes binding Frank and realizes a bomb is about to go off. Back in the cinema, Danny jokes Slater can never be killed. Our hero makes it out of the house just in time. In the next sequence, a group of four of Vivaldi's mafiosos are pursuing Slater in a red pickup truck, firing from the back of it with automatic weapons. It is at this point that the powers of the ticket are revealed as it transports some dynamite from the film into the theater. Danny attempts to suppress them using the popcorn, and as very soon after, Danny enters the movie. He awakens in the back of Slater's car, fleeing from the gangsters. The pursuit eventually concludes in an alley where Slater plays chicken with those chasing him and proves successfully as the truck lurches out of the way and crushes. The good guys, as Danny notes, can never lose. Following these confrontations, we find Slater and Danny at the police HQ with the young film fan repeatedly trying to convince the cop that he is living in a movie. They draw upon the evidence all around them such as the presence of a cartoon cat, Whiskers. In the course of this scene, the fast-talking and frequently angry Lieutenant Decker appoints Danny to the position of Slater's partner and instructs them to investigate Vivaldi's gang. They head off a nearby blockbuster video store. Danny unsuccessfully attempts to find evidence of the previous Jack Slater movies to prove his point. However, he knows that it must be a movie because the staff are far too attractive to be working in such store and there are no ugly women to be seen anywhere. Slater retorts that this is because they're in California. Now working on their assignment, we find Slater and Danny cruising around a leafy neighborhood. Danny claims he'll know Vivaldi's residence, having seen it in the opening sequence of the movie. Eventually, he locates it and pair head to the door where they are greeted by Benedict and a number of well-trained and threatening dogs. They are denied entry and head off. As they walk away, Benedict overhears Danny talking to Slater about the conversation he'd witnessed in the opening sequences of the movie Around the Pool. Benedict is shocked to discover Danny has this inside information about their plans and decides to investigate.
Later that day, we find the partners heading to Slater's ex-wife's house where he is greeted by his rather striking daughter, Whitney. We soon learn that Andy was killed in the altercation at the start of the movie. As Slater heads out to buy a cigar, Benedict and his gang make their entry, with a white suit-clad villain seizing Danny's wallet and the golden ticket. Although upon his return, Slater is able to suppress many of the gang. Benedict makes it way in a shiny black SUV, despite the efforts of Danny to stop him in a pink BMX. By this point of the film, the partners have begun to figure out that Vivaldi's plan to rejoin forces is a ruse, and he actually intends to wipe out his rival at an impending funeral. He declares to Benedict that he wants a bloodbath. Determined to stop this, Danny and Slater arrive at the funeral. Here, they are initially distracted by Slater's apparent friend John Practice, who Danny had previously warned him not to trust. Having been cuffed, Danny is able to free himself using the key he'd fished from the toilet back in the real world. But it is a bullet from Whiskers that really saves the day. With Slater instructing Danny to operate a nearby crane, he makes it to the top of the building and funeral mere minutes before the body lying on display is due to emit a poisonous gas. He is then able to drop it over the edge of the building. He raises his hands with the guns of practically every attendee trained on him. The clothes of the corpse catch on the hook of the crane with. He has gotten away from the rooftop and is trying to free it. In the neck of time, they both plummet into an oily pond, seconds before the gas is released. Here they are greeted by Whitney and drive up in her jeep. Frustrated by the failure of his plan, Benedict returns to the mansion by the sea and shoots Vivaldi. In the ensuing struggle, Benedict and his butler fall through a portal into the real world, and Slater and Danny follow them. In the real New York City, the man soon realizes the difference of life and reality. While stealing a car, he finds out he can now feel pain, though initially saddened to discover his life today has been little more than a lie. Following a long conversation with Danny's mother, his spirits pick up. Meanwhile, at a nearby restaurant, Benedict is formulating a new plan to bring the villains of other movies into this world in order to kill his rivals. Our nemesis has realized that if he is able to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger, the actor that plays Jack Slater, the cop will cease to exist, leaving him free to run havoc in his movie realm. To this end, Benedict decides to work with the Ripper, who he dispatches to the glamorous opening night of Jack Slater 4, tasked with murdering its star. Hot in pursuit, Slater is able to use his resemblance to Arnold to locate his seat for the show and arrives just in time to save him from assassination. Impressed at their likeness, Arnold offers to find Slater work, but he declines, suggesting the actor has brought him nothing but pain. Soon another rooftop confrontation ensues with the help of Danny. Slater is able to both electrocute the Ripper to death and also dispatch Benedict by shooting him in his explosive glass eye. The ticket stub is unfortunately destroyed in the confrontation. With Slater having taken a bullet to the chest during the fight, Danny realizes the only way to save his friend is by transporting him back to the fictional world. Taking the wheel of the ambulance, Danny drives Slater to the movie theater where they are confronted by another of Benedict's recruits. Slater's ingenuously suggests they find the other half of the ticket, which Danny duly does. Having the ticket stub in the hand and with the help of Nick manning the reels, he is able to reopen the portal and they head back into the world of fiction. Immediately, we see a doctor dismissing the rapidly recovering Slater's wounds as relatively minor ones. The movie ends with Danny slipping out of the scene, through the wall and back to reality. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.